Hi there, welcome to Camping Secrets. I'm Marky Mark. I thought it was about time to review my Nature Hike Star River 2 tent. Um, I bought this probably six months ago with my own money, I hasten to add. To activate the parachutes. I said. And I want to give it a review. Now I've used it for four or five wild camping trips. I'm gonna just give you the dimensions, uh, the materials, then I'll set it up and talk to you about the pros and cons because I have used this now in wet weather, state to go on. cold weather. Well, I've made it into the tent. Moist weather, you know, with mist around, condensation, etc. It's seriously dark now and uh, <laughs> we're, we're struggling to put these tents up. Um, and I just want to, yeah, take you through those pros and cons if you're thinking of buying it. Now there are two versions of, in most of the Nature Hike tents. Nature Hike are a Chinese brand, by the way, but you can buy these on Amazon in the UK or from Nature Hike's own website. Just check out the description for some links below if you're interested. As I say, there's two different versions of each tent. You can sort of pay a little bit less for a 210 denier fabric tent, which weighs more and has less waterproof ability, 3,000 millimeters versus 4,000 in this slightly more expensive version. And it's only like 10 pounds more. This is about 145 pounds, the Star River 2, with 20 denier sil nylon uh, fly. And that's 4,000 millimeters of hydrostatic head. So in my view, it's a no brainer really to pay the extra 10 pounds then it's still not much, right? 145 pounds. And you have got probably the top of the range tent that Nature Hike do. Of course, they've got loads of other models. I went for the Star River too, because I really, I'm pretty tall and I wanted to be able to sit upright in it without, you know, the tent on the top of my head. The weight seemed reasonable for me. I thought it was gonna be under two kilograms, one and a half or so, but actually it's more. And I'll tell you why, basically because they don't supply enough pegs. And I've also got the footprint in here, which comes with the tent, but it does add a little bit to the weight. I just wrap it all up together. Right, let's first off just weigh it. I've got some scales here, uh, it's like for weighing joints of meat or something like that. So it's just a zero lap. And then we can just hang the tent on to this hook. So I don't know if you can see that, 2.3 kilograms. Now let's just measure some dimensions. I probably haven't packed this that well. Um, it's all dried out after a particularly wet camping trip recently. But if you're interested in the size in your rucksack, we're looking at about 20, well, 19 inches long, just over 18 actually. It's difficult to be accurate here, but let's say 40, 46 centimeters long, which is about 18 inches in terms of width. About seven inches or 18 centimeters or so. And it's pretty much circular there. So the diameter is about 18, radius about nine centimeters. It feels lightweight to the touch. Let's unwrap it now and see what you get inside. So first thing to note, it's quite a nice stuff sack. And when you're wrapping up the tent after a, 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 you know, a wild camp or something, you want something that will fit into the stuff sack easily. And I found that this is pretty easy once you get the hang of it. I, as I say, and I'll show you when I wrap it up, that I just wrap everything up together. And then if it's wet, I sort of dry it out separately when I get home. So, Let's just unwrap this. So first things first, we got pegs and we got the poles. Poles are aluminium and it's quite a unique design. I don't know if they've copied it off MSR like I've seen reported, but it does bear a bit of a resemblance to, let's just say, uh, more famous brands. Um, we'll go through these in a minute. I just want to show, more importantly, what is you get inside. First off, let's start with the footprint. So this does come with the 
with the Star River too. It's a sort of large rectangular bit of polyester or nylon. I, I don't know exactly what the footprint is made of. I'm wondering if I could weigh this on its own to see. Okay, that's 0.27 kilograms on its own. Yeah, so let's call that 0.3 kilograms for the footprint. And the total together was 2.3. So if you didn't bring the footprint, you'd be around two kilograms. And I think some of those extra pegs have probably added a bit as well. So in theory, you could get the tent under two kilograms. So that's worth knowing about. And the great thing with this tent is that you can pitch it in a first or outer first. And obviously if it's really peeing down with rain, you're gonna to wanna to do outer first. I have found that it's worth practicing how to put up this tent because if you're caught out at night for the first time with a head torch, it can be tricky because it is color coded and you can easily get the fly the wrong side compared with the poles. It has to be done a certain way. Let's just show you the tent pegs. These are very, very light MSR's tent, tent pegs, really lightweight, but I have found there's not quite enough of them in my view. Let's count how many came with it. One, two, three, eight, nine pegs. Now it's fine for the tent on its own, but if you're using the footprint, that takes four. So then you're running a little bit low and you can see I have added four of my own extra ones here. And these are just a bog standard tent pegs. I need to buy some more of these lightweight ones. So I'm gonna use these heavy ones for the footprint here. So the footprint has two things. You've got a little bit of bungee, which is fairly inflexible. You have a clip and that's to clip in with the inner tent. Or is it the outer? I'll find out, I can't remember. And then uh, you have a little washer here. And that's what the pole goes into at each corner. So if you're pitching the fly first, you would put out the poles and I'll show you this. And then the fly goes over, the poles go in here and then you can put the inner up inside under the fly. That way, your inner doesn't get wet. So first off, let's just get these bungees and I'm just gonna uh, basically peg these out. Just getting the pegs in. That one went in nicely. Always good to get your footprint nice and taut so that there's no creases in it. So I think first off, we'll put the inner up first, but let's get the poles out now. So this is the bag. Well, it's, all, it's one big pole, which is quite nice. Just takes a little bit of work to put it together. Again, it feels nice and light. Let's just uh, get the weight of that. So that's 0.57 kilograms for the pole. Now this is color coordinated. It took me a while to realize that. I'm not someone who reads instructions. I'm a bit of a give it a go kind of guy in more ways than one. She's got this big bundle of poles. You can see that some are silver, some sections, and the others are green. Now that comes in really useful when you're putting the other parts of the tent on. So this will just undo. You've got one main hub. Well, there's two main hubs where it becomes like a triangle. And all you have to do is just slot all these in so that it just becomes rigid and then at, in the midpoint of the tent you have a section a cross member section which comes out here and this hangs the inner onto it and it sort of gives width to the tent and more headroom inside it's a nice arrangement so i'm gonna arrange it now with the silver part at the back so remember that for later so just put the pole through each of the washers that I showed you before. Yeah, so that's definitely the back of the tent at the far end. You can see the tent is sort of taking shape already. 
What else have we got? So we have the fly and we have the inner. Now this is where the color coding is important. We need to find the silver part, which is the back of the tent. So let's just lay it out. The door, there's two doors on this tent and that is one of the key selling points. It's knowing what to look for, for the colors. So you can see at the front, we've got gray straps here with a clip and then at the back, we've got green. Now it doesn't help me that the green is a slightly different hue to the green of the poles. And so it took me a long time to work out that this was the co color coordination. And this is how you work out front and back. So this needs to be at this end. And there's another one, presumably at the bottom here. And then at the back, we've got the gray. Here we go. So what So these come back here. And again, we've got a clip and we've got the washer. And what if you're putting up the inner first, we have to reattach the pole into each of the washers. If we want to put the fly up first, if it's raining, then the fly comes on top and I will show this later, but let's just do inner first this time. So because we're doing inner, we've got an additional washer here. We need to take the pole out at each point and put it into the hole of the inner. And then there's a little bit of the pole still coming out and that connects into the existing washer of the footprint. We do that again here. So again, through the hole of the inner, and then this can just rest up in the footprint. And then peg the lock down to keep it secure. So presuming it's not raining, we've put the inner in first. Then all we have to do is a load of clips. And what's quite nice with these is, and I will show in close up, you just put it through and twist. And then it clips straight to the frame, really easy. Same on this side, just through the bar and twist. And the same on an upwards tra trajectory. And then you just walk along the tent doing the same thing. In the middle section, you have, as I said before, you have this central cross member and there's a little sleeve here on the end of a bit of uh, strip. So you've just got the end of the pole here. You grab this little bit of canvas strip, find the little sleeve on the end and whack it in. Pull it tight and then that is holding out these side walls. Really nifty. There we go. Then at the back, and the clip is simply a little double hook re reversed with respect to each other. You literally slide it up through the middle and twist and that holds on nicely. We just keep hooking this up. You can see it's pretty quick. I mean, I am talking it through, but if you were just doing this straight away, you can get this inner up extremely quickly. Okay. So now we can see the full inner tent. And you can see we've got a nice sort of solid layer to the inner tent uh, at, around the bottom of the tent. Got the footprint underneath. And then we have this fairly thin 20 denier sill nylon floor, which is really thin, keeps it lightweight, but it does feel a little flimsy sometimes. And you have to be careful not to snag that 20 denier floor. Uh, on top, we've got full sort of mesh and we have these half moon doors. And I'm gonna show you what I think of these doors, but you can essentially unzip in a half moon. Now, what you see here is part of the problem with this tent. Well, it's one of my main concerns is that once that inner door is unzipped, it just drops down. And when you're trying to cook, say it's raining, you want to cook just sat like this. You've got the fly over the top and a vestibule. 
you've got this door here and it just gets in the way i mean that is my probably my numero uno number one criticism of the tent i just don't like the door i wish it opened to the side somehow and we could sort of wrap it around here and for storage i don't see what the point of having it done here it's going to get muddy get wet there are little toggles here so you can sort of tie it up as you can see you know that just clips in there and the same here it's just a little messy so other than that i mean if that's the only thing wrong with the tent you'd think well for the money it's still a great buy i'll bring you inside now just to show you the interior so as i said before the floor of this tent is quite thin it really feels like crepe paper or something now you don't want to catch this on any brambles you'll go straight through it it is what lends itself to portability packs tight and nice and lightweight but if strength and durability are your issues you may want to look to other tents with a thicker bathtub at the bottom i think this it is a concern of mine and that's why i always use the footprint because that's like a sacrificial layer which will go first first thing to note though is the height of this tent absolutely immense i am tall and there is so much headroom here brilliant uh it was a major selling point for me when i read the dimensions and that is particularly why i went for the star river 2 over others and also because it has doors on both sides so you can store your gear here and get out the other side or if it starts raining on one side you can get out the other you don't have to move the tent around but as it is freestanding you can when pitching move it around a bit if you want to it is a bit more tricky if you're using the footprint but it is doable got the tape measure let's just measure real world dimensions so width is a good 119 centimeters so we'll go with that and length is enormous uh, 190 that's 204 meters long sorry not meters 204 centimeters so let's lie down feet at the end i mean i'm six foot three if i put my feet down and i'm only using this on my own you know i can lie out straight and i've probably got that sort of extra you know i'm about 194 centimeters and this is 204 so yeah i'd say about 10 centimeters extra and of course if you're on your own you can lie diagonally and get even more length let's just bring you inside just want to show the corner of the tent uh, there's a pocket here so if it's storing little knickknacks <laughs> or gadgets or whatever you want and there's another one on this side here so that's pretty cool and actually in summer if it's really hot you could sleep in a tent like this and just use it as an insect net and i think it works really well then you don't need the fly saying that i've got a load of flies inside now already get out i hate those things foot room the tent does go lower at the back you know if i'm lying back i hate these crocs sorry about that that's embarrassing but you know there's plenty of foot room if that's the bottom of the tent all right let's just zip this up again as i say there are two-way zips so you can leave that up at the top and then zip up from the other if you want your choice that way you only have to zip down part of it and obviously we've got on the other side a similar arrangement it's done pegged out the tent so let's just quickly peg out this bottom bit again you've got these bungee loops here and we can just peg out and we've got an extra bungee here so we've got the bungee for the footprint and we've got a bungee for the inner which has got the poles attached to it so we just go in here with one of the pegs and in you could put extra bungee on if you wanted to double peg let's get the fly on you're looking for the gray two grays here 
so they want to be on this side because we've got the no that's wrong greys at the back Greys there, greens at the front. And then it's a very simple case of using these clips and clipping into what is available from the inner. You just do this on all four sides and then the final one over here. Each of these clips can be pulled tight. So the fly now is on and we've clipped it into the inner, which is nice. And now we can just stretch out each side and basically peg it out. So again, we've got the peg, one peg for this side. I literally just connect that there. And then you can tighten this up how you want with the little toggle. And then another one at the back. Yes, yeah, so we've got a, a guy line at the back. Let's put another one in. Now I've only got two pegs left. So they give just enough pegs for the two doors and three guy lines. So in my mind, that's a little lame. And nature height, if you're watching this, please just extend the number of pegs and guy lines. It's very, very simple. And on this side the door comes out, again a little bungee here, and you can see it's getting dark now. And just push that up nicely. Okay, so everything that was in this bag now, the poles, the pegs, it's all gone. So let's just go around the tent. Whoa! Holy costume change and holy time of day change. Well, you won't believe what happened. Last night, I ran out of battery on my phone, borrowed my wife's phone to film the rest of the video with me taking the whole tent down, talking through the pros and cons, and I hadn't clicked record. So I packed it all away and there was no footage to show you. Uh, so a lot of swearing ensued. I'm back today having set it up again. Actually, my wife did. and. Um, I've come out just to show you through the inside of the tent and how it works. And then I'll pack it away again and just show you how easy that is. At the back, we've got the ventilation hole here, as I said, and there's only one on the tent. Door on each side. Uh, and it's an interesting shape, actually. So it really has got that high back where you can sit up, high roof, and then that excellent cross member here which enables you to sit up around the whole tent. And then the foot side of the tent is a lot lower, and but still fairly high. And as I mentioned, there's only a few guy ropes on this tent. One at the foot end, as shown here, and then two guys on this side. So I'm definitely gonna be fitting some extra guy ropes. So let's look at the vestibule on this side. So we have Velcro with a nice sort of storm flap covering the zip. And if we look closely at the seams, I think they're sealed on the inside, but not on the outside. So you have Velcro on the outside. The zip comes up from the bottom. You just pull up. And at the moment we've got it hooked over the peg, we can open that up. And you can tie back this door here with this little toggle. And that gives you access to the inner. Now it might be nice, it might have been nice to have a few more points here, because you can only tie it here so this bit can come loose. It's difficult to fully tuck it away. So let's undo the inner zip like before. And you do have this dropping down, which is slightly irritating. Yes, you can tie it away. And here we do have two toggles, but I'd actually argue it'd be better to have it on the door here. 
so you can tuck this away, toggle it, and then the same here. It just feels a little like if it's muddy, as it often is in the UK, if it's muddy here, this door is just going to be in the mud and you're going to be sat on it and you're going to catch it in your shoes and just, it's a, uh, yeah, it's just a bit of a letdown, I would say, but not a deal breaker for sure. So let's go into the tent. Now, one thing I want to point out, because this material, this 20 denier material, the sill nylon, it is so thin, when you move in, it can slide around. Now, it's very dependent on how well you've secured the footprint and the four corners of the inner. If it's not nicely stretched, when you get in, you can slide a bit and it feels like you could, you know, potentially tear at the seams, this inner. So you've got to be a little careful. And that's why I always do use the footprint underneath because it's so thin. I'm sure it's stronger than it looks or feels, but just be careful when you're move, moving around inside, I think. So I do like the way that the fly is supported over the poles and gives this vestibule. So many times I've been caught in the rain and I've cooked in here. You can put your rucksack in here or your boots or whatever you want and it's nicely segregated. And of course you have the door on the other side uh, to do exactly the same thing. And you can open both doors to let air right through and still be protected from rain and wind. So that side of things is really flexible and really good, I think. So now I'm sat in here, let's go through the pros and cons of this tent. So I would say it's really good quality for the price. I mean, having this sill nylon material is really lightweight. As I say, with everything in and extra pegs and the footprint, inner and fly, it was measuring about 2.3 kilograms. And if you take out the footprint and the extra pegs, it's under two kilograms, which I think is, you know, perfectly adequate for a night or two's wild camping. If you want something lighter weight, maybe a pole tent or something like the Lanshan 2, then, you know, that's more expensive and, you know, not that much lighter. I've had no problems with rain with this tent. Um, it's very waterproof, 4,000 millimeters hydrostatic head and the water beads off. I've had no water ingress. If we look at the seams, uh, it's probably worth just doing that now. Yeah, so you can see there's double seams, double stitching in that sort of zip there. Um, I've had no leakage through the zip. Same on the other side. Um, so they do have each of the stitching points is sort of sealed and I've had no water coming in via those. So it's pretty good from a waterproof point of view and the interior has stayed dry. As I said, it's a lightweight tent and it does pack up pretty small for the size. I do like the pole system and the way you, it's just one single pole that sort of comes out and you turn it into the, the shape of the tent. And so there's no real risk of losing parts of the pole system. It's all sort of connected. So that's a real bonus, I think. Very quick to set up this tent. Um, and as I said, you can do it fly first or inner first. On a hot day like today, you do inner first and you can actually keep the tent as an inner only and just as a fly net kind of thing uh, on really sunny days. I uh, can't believe how sunny it is today actually for October. Um, yeah, and having that flexibility to move, it's like a rigid standalone tent. You can move, you can put it up and then move it around to where you want to and then fly first or inner first. So that flexibility is quite unusual in the tent. You do need the footprint though if you want to do fly first pitching. Uh, the dual entrances are great, so you've got the door on this side with a vestibule, you've got another door on the other side. 
So as I said, if it starts raining in one direction or you know the wind changes direction, you can choose to use the other door. So for solo camping, that's really flexible and it's part of the reason I chose this tent. Overall, I would say it's a fairly spacious tent. You can sit up, I'm six foot three, I can sit up with ease. So you could be much taller and still sit up. Right, let's go on to the cons now. Uh, all tents get condensation. I've, I've not really known many that don't. Um, and this is no exception. There's not loads of ventilation. There's just one ventilation point at the top and the back. And I have you know, seen moisture certainly on the fly and then certainly on the netting inside. I've not had anything dripping down yet. I've used the tent maybe four or five times um, and in rainy conditions. So I think, but only on one night stays. I've not done multiple nights, one after the other. I think you are likely to get some condensation, but I really haven't found a tent that doesn't do that, to be honest. I've talked about the door and that when it's undone, that it's on the floor. I do think that's a bit of a downside of this tent. Um, but it's not a deal breaker for me. So, you know, just be aware that that's the case. Some people have reported that the zippers are not well protected from the rain. And I guess if you've got driving rain, it might somehow get in through this storm flap or under it. Um, but as I say, I've not experienced that. So I can't call it a negative because it doesn't seem like it is a negative to me. Other small negatives, you know, uh, although the inner tent is supported by this cross beam here, you know, the walls do come down the inner tent. I bring the camera in, you know, the side walls here, you can see there is a sloping wall here. Uh, but in general, there is plenty of room inside this tent. And then, you know, the height of it could be a problem in really windy conditions. Again, I've not taken it up on a mountaintop for high storm wind. I'm concerned that there's only three guide ropes and with the height, I think there could be problems in really high wind. So that's for a future review, I think. I'll be continuing to use this through the rest of this year and into windy conditions and wintry conditions. I mean, I'd say it's only a three season tent. You have got all that mesh. It's not solid inner everywhere. So it is going to be a bit colder. Um, I don't plan on using it right in the depths of winter or in really stormy conditions. And for that, you need a bit more of a rugged tent. So, you know, for three season capability, I definitely recommend the nature height. So what are my overall thoughts? Well, I've pretty much summed it up there. There's a few negatives, a few niggles. Uh, maybe they've cut costs in certain places. I'd rather pay a little bit more, if I'm honest. It's 145 pounds. I'd rather pay 175 and get a couple of extra guy lines and some extra pegs. Uh, that's just the way I am. I like to have it all there. Um, the door zip arrangement for me is not fully optimum just in terms of it just doesn't feel that great and it's i just don't like the material dragging on the floor especially when it's wet um i love the flexibility of this tent i love that you can move it around set it up open doors on both sides sit upright get it in a small rucksack very easily not too heavy I mean, what's not to like? I really do think for the price, it's very difficult to beat some of these nature hike offerings. Yes, their designs may be dubious in that they may have uh, got inspiration from other bigger uh, tent manufacturers, but that is the way of the world at the moment. I'm not a fan of people stealing designs or you know being influenced by them, but the Chinese really do do that. But at the end of the day, this is, they're available to buy and I'm buying them unless we boycott everything from China, then there's gonna, you know, there's just no way out of it in my view, but I don't wanna get political. Um, I think, uh, so it's a thumbs up from me. What I'm gonna do now is just pack it away and you can see how quick it is to pack it away in real time. And, you know, overall 
I'd say definitely thumbs up for the Nature Hike Star River 2. Okay, let's take this tent down, or at least get the fly off first. I wouldn't mind showing how to pitch it fly first, uh, but it's a very similar process. So let's on first, let's get these pegs out, guide ropes, and then just zip up all the doors. So that's the fly done. So let's put these uh, tent pegs into the bag, all zipped up. The fly is connected to the inner by this clip. So just a big old clip. So if I squeeze that, that comes undone. You have got one for the footprint as well. So you can either clip to the inner or you can clip to the footprint. I'm just gonna go around, loosen all these clips. Uh, there we go. And then it will be easy to remove that fly. So it's so simple once you've done it a few times. So now the fly is completely loose. We can just remove it from the tent. You know, and that is under five minute job. I was taking my time. Now we just need to basically twist all these clips and it is so easy to loosen off the inner tent, take it off the cross member, twist all these, really, really simple. Before you know it, the inner is down. Now you can do that inside the tent with the fly still up. And that is what is so good about this. So you can put down the inner inside and still be protected from the rain. No rain today. So let's get the pole down. Remove the pole now from each side. From each hole. And we can literally just fold it up, pull it out of each junction box. You see it just folds up really simply. You just walk it through. And just undo each and every one of these. And then these poles literally just, you work through them one by one. And in the end, it's down to that sort of size. Find the bag, whack the poles into the bag. So now I've basically got pegs, poles in a tiny little box. And then how do I wrap all this up? Well, I do it all in one go. So I just have the footprint down. I put the inner on top of that. And that's basically the same size, same area, same dimensions. And then I just lay the fly sheet on top. And you can, if you're organized, you can sort of wrap up all your guy ropes so that they don't get knotted up. Now the bag is about a third, so all I do here is fold sort of halfway this side, right across, half, and then a half the other side. So now we're about the width of the bag. Same here, perfectly dry today. And then the easiest way to do this is just get the poles and the pegs, hold them together, stick it on top, and then just roll the whole lot together. Yes, in the wet it's going to get muddy, but I always take it out when I get home and dry it all out. So quick and easy this. A little bit of air at the end that can easily get ironed out. And then the bag is a nice size, nicely oversized. So it's just a simple matter of whacking it in and then tucking in the end bit. Make sure everything's inside and then pull the drawstring. There we go. Jobs are good. So I hope you found that useful. Um, 
yes, I didn't give a full demonstration of fly first pitching, but rest assured that it is possible. It's not something I regularly do. In fact, I've never done it under live conditions. Um, but this tent is very flexible and great value for money. So, you know, check out the link in the description below. And if you want to buy one, I've, I really highly recommend it. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, we're going to be doing loads more of this, so please like and subscribe to Camping Secrets. Our channel is growing and we want to do more reviews and get out and do more camping for you. So, bye for now.